Praise the Lord, grace and peace unto you once again. It's your girl, Prophetess Teresa Moulton with her apostolic voice. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here thinking what the world need now is love, sweet love. I tell you too much is happening in this world. Hate crimes are on the rise and we must diffuse this with the light of God, which is the love of God. Father, we thank you right now that we come before you filled with your presence, recognizing God that you are the light of the world. And we thank you, God, for the love that you have placed in our spirit. We thank you for the infilling power of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling power. Oh, God, that speaks and moves when we can't even do anything. The Spirit of God is present and breathing. We bind up every spirit that's not of you, God. Every hater's spirit, every spirit that come to annihilate your people. Every spirit that is an accuser of the brethren. We curse it from the root in the very seed today and we send it back to dry places. We loose the anointing of God of love in the name of Jesus, the gift of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit in Galatians. Father, we thank you, oh God, because the greatest gift is love. Ah, so God, we thank you for that fruit, love. We thank you for the greatest fruit should be love in the name of Jesus. And I thank you in advance for victories already ours because the blood was shed at Calvary for every one of us. And now God, as we thank you and we recognize that we're nothing without you, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this prayer by faith. Amen and thank God. Today, I just wanted to read a few scriptures uh, to just enlighten you, to let you know that God is love. And, you know, without God, we're nothing. God is love. And, and it's very, very clear and apparent to me that if God wasn't love, we couldn't even know how to love. The Bible reads, and uh, let me start with... Uh, Revelations in 22 and 21. Let me show you why God's love is displayed in his word. In the Holy Bible. I'm telling you, it is so many verses where you can find that God is love. And in him there's no darkness in 1 John. I'm telling you, if we just keep searching the Bible, Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, God, I'm telling you, if you just keep searching the scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, on and on and on, God loves us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 6, for while we were still weak at the right time. Christ died for the ungodly. Now the King James Version read, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person. One would dare even to die, but God show his love for us in while we were still sinners. Don't you know, we must practice what God has already laid the blueprint. In 1 Corinthians 13, we all know that. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast. It's not puffed up. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not, you know, irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endure all things. So love, I'm telling you, is an equal kindness to humility. Because if you humble yourself to someone you know that did you wrong, you would definitely make it through here. 
I'm telling you, we must learn. What the world needs now is love. Too much hate is in the world. We must take authority. We that know God, we must show the world that God is love. That's why I love John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. We have to give our only. That's right. Humble yourself. That sometimes when you are right, you must humble yourself and say, I'm going to take the low road because I want God to be lifted up. First Peter chapter four, verse eight says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sin. Oh my God, love can cover when someone's wrong. Love can bring somebody out of hell. Love can bring somebody out of sin, but we must show the love of God. We must lift up the name of Jesus and let people see that God is love and in him there is no darkness. It covers a multitude of sin. That's what the scripture says. So are it ready to overlook any sin that was done against you? That means I'm going to overlook it. Regardless of what you've done to me, I'm going to overlook it. So that's what you see when you say it covers a multitude of sin. That is just what God does for us in Christ. He covers our sins. And we know that we got sin. Amen. And it says by this in John chapter 3. And I believe it's about the 16th or to the 18th. By this we know love that he laid his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers or the brethren. But if anyone has the world's goods and see his brother in need yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? And the uh, King James Version says, How dwelleth the love of God in you? Little children, let us love, let us not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. John is showing us that proof right there, a solid proof of admissible evidence. Amen. In a court of law, we would say, I wretch the verdict, love covers the multitude of sin. So we thank God that God loved us so much that he looked beyond our thoughts and he saw our needs. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's people on the rampage doing any and everything. That's a spirit that's against us. That's a spirit that's of the enemy. The Bible says he go to and fro as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. You know that is not God's spirit. So we must definitely stay intact and know God's spirit versus the enemy. We thank God for this word on today. I'm telling you, I just sat here and I said, what the world need now is love. You need to pray for those who are behind prison bars. You need to pray for those who are bound to drugs and alcohol. You need to pray for your cousins and your friends who are not born again and stop judging them and begin to just love them. Talk about Jesus in front of them and let them know I know a way out of everything that we could be in that binds us. And that is Jesus. We got to pray for those who were in that shooting. We got to pray for those who lost their lives. Pray for the young man who did it. Because I'm telling you, that was a spirit that overtook him. Someone had to impart that spirit in him. Spirits are transferred or they're taught by watching someone else. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind up this supremacist spirit. I take authority over it now and I send it back to dry places superiority, I curse you from the root and I send you back to dry places. I lose a spirit of liberty, a spirit that we can all walk together hand in hand as the great late Martin Luther King. I thank God 
that God, you are God of peace and a God of nonviolence. In the name of Jesus, I thank you in advance that you have given us victory in the midst of the storm. God, I ask that you cover your people. I decree and declare that we are covered by the blood and we'll stay in the 91st Psalms. In the name of Jesus, let thy kingdom come. Let thine will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, God, we ask that you lose the anointing on those who are incarcerated. Whether they be locked up, they still can be free in their spirit. Whether they be sick, they still can be free in their spirit. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you for the blood that was shed for us. By your stripes, we are already healed. And I thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I loose the anointing of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. This I ask in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Once again, I thank you. And I'm continuously going to pray for the bereaved and for those who lost loved ones. And for those I may not have called out, know that Jesus loves you. And so do I. And I pray much for you uh, that you would actually feel the presence of God, even as I speak today, in the name of Jesus. And always remember, Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I do honor the Lord, but just for the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, I honor my husband and my children and the body of Christ and my children's children. I thank you in advance for listening, and I hope that you'll listen later on and get something out of this podcast. In Jesus' name, until we meet again, amen.